Clemson and SMU meet in the ACC Championship this Saturday night, 8 o'clock on ABC. I'm going to talk about both teams, what's at stake, you know, a college football playoff appearance, and give you my prediction in just a second. Hey, welcome to the channel. I'm Brian. I'm glad you're here. I don't know why I put grit in my voice when I said, I'm Brian. Hello, boy. Anyway, uh, I hope you'll subscribe. It is free. I've looked at my analytics, and it showed me that uh, showed me that if most of the people who watch me consistently or new viewers subscribed, yeah, I would have like ten to twenty thousand more, if if not more than that, subscribers. So if you like someone who's an independent, you want to support something like that, someone who talks about college football without any uh, strings attached, I hope you will subscribe. Remember, it is free. I do appreciate it. Both of these teams are. On different roads, but they've led to the same place, the ACC championship. You have SMU, first year in the ACC with third-year head coach Rhett Lashley, a guy who's highly respected in college football as an offensive coordinator and a quarterback coach. He's led his team in to Charlotte. And to get past history, now I'm not going to harp on this, but when you think of SMU, what do you think of? They're the only team to receive the death penalty. That's, for, uh, that's what, 40 years ago? The best way to get past that and clear that out of anyone's minds is to attain this moment, win the ACC championship, and go to the college football playoff. Let's talk about Clemson. Clemson is a blue blood of the ACC. They've won something like, what, seven out of the past nine ACC championships? Kate Klubnick has an ACC championship. He took over in a very messy game. Won it against Drake May in, in North Carolina. Most of the Clemson coaches can get in their compact sedan or truck or whatever. You could blindfold them, and they can drive up Interstate 85 to Bank of America Stadium. They've been to Charlotte so much. Dabo Swinney's accomplished more than most coaches will ever think about attaining. Two national championships, six consecutive college football playoff appearances. But let's be honest with ourselves. Clemson's not elite like they used to be. They're not dominant like they were. But this chance that's been given to them to not only play in the ACC championship, but to win it and go to the college football playoff, no matter what some people may object to it, no, no matter if they object to it, this is their chance. This is a chance to start going back up the mountain, to go to the pinnacle. Let's dive into both of these teams. Now, I'm not doing a deep dive here. Let's talk about SMU. SMU, they have a pretty good defense. I think uh, total defense, they're ranked something like 28th. They're number four against rushing yard, in, in rushing yards allowed, so they're very stingy. We just got finished playing South Carolina. I think that plays in our, in our favor of having to prepare for something like that. But they, they're really good at stopping the run. One of their problems is they're number 85 in passing yards allowed. So that is something that Clemson's offensive coaching staff needs to look at and think about, well, we have those two really good freshman wide receivers that, I mean, they're just living up to the hype. You, you have Antonio Williams, who's having a really good season. So maybe we want to feed the ball downfield against this team. Another interesting fact about SMU, they're tied for 11th in team sacks. So we just got finished playing South Carolina, who came into the game with 39 sacks. Clemson only allowed them one sack. Kudos to getting the ball out of your hands quick and the offensive line, Matt Luke, working with a bunch of injured players and put on that performance. That's the difference. That's the difference when you hire an elite coach like Matt Luke. You see it. So Clemson's going up against a team much like South Carolina in the sense of team sacks. Uh, SMU has 37 sacks coming into this game. So you have, you have that. Let's talk about SMU, who, by the way, is a two-and-a-half point favorite in this game. They have Kevin Jennings. Now, this guy, he can play football. He's six feet tall, about 190, 195 pounds. He's a, he's a Texas high school quarterback. He's thrown for 19 touchdowns. He can play. He's shifty. You have to respect that. 
Clemson just played a quarterback like, or okay, they're different, but they're both mobile. So that's the like preparation that you can you can step back and say, hey, Sellers is six foot three, two hundred and forty something pounds, and they're different body types. But a mobile quarterback, the plan for a mobile quarterback, a lot of the times you can kind of do the same thing for another mobile quarterback. Now this guy, he's shifty. He can move. Uh, he's agile. You have to respect that. He has the ability uh, to to make you pay on the ground if you're not paying attention to him. Let's move on to their running back, Brashard Smith. Now, this guy is 5'10", about 196 pounds. He's not a bruiser, but he's rushed for 1,157 yards, 14 touchdowns. He has some talent, y'all. He has some talent. He can play football. So, and he will catch the ball coming uh, coming out of uh, out of the backfield. He has three touchdowns receiving uh, on the season. He had the, his longest run is seventy one yards. Now, when you look at their team as far as like who they're passing the ball to, there is not just one receiver that you can key in on and say, okay, if we shut down this guy, you know, we've gotten them. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at uh, Roderick Daniels. This guy, five hundred and two yards. Keyshawn Smith, 499 yards. You have Jordan Hudson, 363 uh, yards. R.J. Maryland, they're tied in. I'm pretty sure he's out for the season, but he had 359. Uh, Moochie Dixon, 351 yards. My point in all of this is they're spreading the ball around, so it's not like if you shut down one guy, you've shut down all of them. You have to respect them across the board, so they've done a really good job um, there. Now, when we talk about when we talk about that defense – uh, some of the players you have to watch out for. And by the way, if anyone's injured and I've overlooked it, I'm sorry. Uh, Isaiah Smith, six and a half sacks. J uh, Jafari, I believe I'm saying that uh, correct. Uh, Harvey, six and a half sacks. So th this team this team can come out and play you, play you strong. You have three guys with three interceptions. You have guys sprinkled throughout. You like how I said that's weird, wasn't it? Uh, one interception here and there. So... Their defense, they're just not some offensive team that comes out. It's just going to just, you know, if you keep the ball from this side of the field, you can be productive on the other. They have talent across the board, so that's why they're they're ranked, uh, I believe, number eight in the college football playoff currently. So, so you mix that with Rhett Lashley and his creativeness and his willingness to just roll up his sleeves and get the job done. You know he's going to make adjustments. Any coach in D Major D1 football, you, you know they're going to make adjustments, and you have to be ready to make an adjustment to their adjustment. If not, you lose games. Let's talk about Clemson uh, on their side of the football for anybody who is, uh, you know, maybe from the SMU camp, and you're looking at Clemson, you're trying to try to get an idea about who they are and what they do. So, Cade Klubnick. Cade Klubnick has had a much better season this year. I, I know that he had the game against South Carolina. He threw the interception against South Carolina, and a lot of Clemson fans are mad about it. I get it, okay? I understand. I understand. But last year, he finished the season with nine interceptions. Now, Sweeney said five of those were not his fault. This year, he has five interceptions, 29 touchdowns, and he's passed for over 3,000 yards. Also, in the South Carolina game, the two touchdowns Clemson got, guess who did it? Cade Klubnick. How did he do it with his legs? The guy is quick. A lot of people overlook Cade Klubnick. I think now less less now than than probably earlier in the season. But the guy can run. He did, he did it in the Pittsburgh game to win the Pittsburgh game. He's done it other times in the season. The guy is a true dual-threat quarterback. And... He's getting better. Clemson's Phil Moffa, over a thousand yards, uh, rushing the ball, eight touchdowns. Phil got uh, Phil got hurt, and I'm pretty sure he was hurt coming into the South Carolina game. We saw it. Uh, uh, you know, some people are upset that he tried to reach back for the pass that got intercepted, uh, but it, Phil was hurt. I, I wish that they would have just pulled Phil out and just said, "Hey, man, we know you want you, you want to play, but you're hurt." Because the guy's a warrior. I mean, he just goes out there and he plays his brains out, you know. But um, 
he he has the talent he has the ability i'm going to move a little faster because most most of the people who's watching this video uh probably are clemson fans knows a lot about clemson but just to to go through some of our leaders at wide receiver antonio williams 788 yards 10 touchdowns uh the two true freshmen bryant wesco and tj moore uh 535 yards for wesco 503 for Moore. our tight end 438 yards receiving for brenning stool uh so, you know, those guys, they're coming out, they're, they're playing very physical ball, uh, they're li the freshmen are living up to the hype, and Antonio Williams, after being injured most of last year, he's having a really good campaign, I'm really happy for him. If you go down to the defensive side of the football, uh, let's talk about T.J. Parker. Yes, T.J. Parker, I believe he was called something like the quarterback killer in high school. He has 10 sacks on the season. Yeah, you, you heard me right. Ten sacks on the season. Who who is number who has five sacks? True freshman top recruit from this this past recruiting cycle, Sammy Brown. Sammy Brown. He was pulled out of the South Carolina game. A lot of people, including myself, was not happy about that. Uh, because he was actually making tackles. Uh, but hey, why let the other team stop you when you can stop yourself? Peter Woods has three uh sacks on the season. Our leading tackle uh tackler is Barrett Carter. 68 uh, tackles, three and a half sacks, and the, the guy's very mobile. In fact, I, I'll talk about him uh, potentially spying he or Khalil Barnes. I know he's a safety, but bringing Khalil Barnes down and spying Kevin Jennings here in just one second. So what is the keys to the game? What can play in, in either team's favor? Okay, first, let's talk about let's talk about SMU. SMU is hungry. Like, if, if you want to get beat, which no one in the right mind wants to get beat. But if you want to see a team who's going to potentially win it all or win a conference championship and make their first college football playoff appearance and they've never done it, that's going to be driven by hunger. You find someone who wants it more. You hear that saying, who wants it more. The implication there is that, yes, there's people who wants it, but there's also people who wants it more, and that's how they attain it. SMU wants it. And I believe they, I'm not going to say they want it more than Clemson, but Clemson's been here and they've done that. They can walk you through uh, their trophy case, and it's impressive. SMU, they don't have that trophy case. But, but, they may want it more. That's a question we need to, we need to look at. When you've never done that thing, when you've never had that championship, you never had that college football playoff appearance, but the guys on the other side of the football, they do have the appearances. They do have the conference championships. They have the recent national championships within the past eight years. Maybe you want it more than them. Why? Because you've never had it. That's one thing that's playing in their favor. Let's talk about SMU uh, in this sense. They have five common opponents with Clemson. They've beat every one of those opponents, one of those being Louisville. But in most of those those games, they beat Clemson. Uh, they beat the opponents that Clemson beat. They beat them worse than Clemson. Now, I know we have to be careful going, well, so-and-so beat this team, so that means they're going to beat this team. Or they beat this team worse, so it means they're going to beat this common, this common opponent. Or this, I said that awful. You get where I'm going with that. You have to be careful with that. But you can leverage that to make an assumption. So, I talked about at the beginning, them trying to move on as a program and attain a new history. That's going to be driving them as well. Of course, a spot in the college football playoff. Let's talk about Clemson, on the other hand. There are people in the media who says Clemson does not deserve to be here. Sure, we know we know about the conference layout that, yes, in fact, they won more games than Miami, and they can't help that Miami blew a 21-point lead, right? But we know what people are talking about, the college football playoff appearance. We know, we know the major argument there. But here's the deal. If Clemson wins this game and they take advantage of this incredible opportunity, this could right the ship in a lot of ways. That if Clemson actually wins this game, it gives them the opportunity to go into the college football playoff 
And instead of just showing up and saying, hey, we made the playoff, and they get the crap beat out of them, they could go to the college football playoff and actually be competitive, maybe change the narrative, maybe get better recruits, maybe, just maybe. Also for Clemson, you need to understand something about them. They have been in these bright lights before. Cade Klubnick did come into a way worse situation two years ago. He came into one of, I would say, not the worst scenario, but he came into a pretty bad situation when he was thrown into the ACC championship game against Drake May and the North Carolina Tar Heels. See, he had, for you SMU fans who really don't know, he was sitting beside, behind DJ. And they had just lost the game to South Carolina the week before by one point, but that really was because we stopped running the football. But everybody began to chirp throughout that season once they realized that just DJ's career at Clemson was not going the way that they thought it should go. You should put Kate in. Dabo didn't. But Dabo waited to put Cade in, in the ACC championship. Don't know if anyone remembers that game. He won that game. In this situation, Cade Klubnick has two full seasons under his belt with his coordinator that he's now had for two full seasons. He has the weapons. He has the wide receivers. If Phil is healthy, he has Phil. I, we'll just kind of leave that alone. The truth is, Kay Klubnick has been in this situation. And I think that means a lot. Also, he has a guru coaching the offensive line. Matt Luke took a, a really battered and beat up offensive line this past week against South Carolina, who came in ranked third in team sacks. He held them to one sack. And a lot of those guys were beat up. That's the difference when you hire an elite coach at their position. And Matt Luke is definitely, arguably, the best offensive line coach in America. So that works in our favor. Clemson just got finished playing Lenaris Sellers. Lenaris Sellers and Kevin Jennings are two totally different body types, but they're both mobile. So you can take some of that preparation and actually use it against Jennings. Now, Jennings, again, six feet. Probably 195 pounds. Lenora Sellers, 6'3", 240 plus. They're going to approach mobility different, but they're both mobile. And I think playing against Sellers right before this game plays in Clemson's favor. Now, if you are an SMU fan and you're watching this channel and you're like, this guy's a homer. And he's going to pick his team because, well, I mean, look around me. I'm covered in orange and purple. I've got this on and everything. Well, I just want to tell you something. You need to go watch some of my videos, especially before the Georgia game, before the South Carolina game. I picked Georgia to win. I picked South Carolina to win. Louisville, I said you, you're going to have to be careful, but I didn't anticipate them beating Clemson at night in Death Valley. No one had beaten Clemson at night in Death Valley since the 2013 National Champions, if my memory serves me correct. That's Florida State. So it had been a while. I'm hard on my team. Not because I just like to do that. It's because I just look at reality and I call it. SMU, I believe you can win this game. SMU, I believe you're tired of being overlooked. SMU, I I know you're sick and tired of having to hear about if y'all lose this game, Alabama is in. You're tired of hearing about stuff like that. I get it. I do believe you can win this game, and I'm not saying that you're totally out of it. But Clemson fans, buckle up. I don't know if it's the grilled chicken I ate before this, but I have a good feeling about this game. I try not to base my decisions off of feelings. I try to base it off of logic and then kind of go with my feelings and balance it out. But I believe that Clemson is going to seize the moment. 
And I'm not going to give you a score prediction. I really don't know. I really don't know how this is going to turn out. But Clemson fans, I believe Clemson wins this ball game, wins the ACC championship, and they go to the college football playoff. I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to talk about uh, the CFP. But I think they win this conference championship. And uh, anyway, that's my thoughts. Folks, let me know in the comment section, what do you think? Who do you think wins this game and why? I'd love to hear it. Remember, if you will, subscribe. It is free. It does help out the channel, and I do appreciate it. Folks, as always, go Tigers.